1969 Camaro, but there's absolutely nothing original about this when you look under the hood. On the outside, it's beautiful. The paint job is gorgeous. The way the chrome accented it is amazing. It is here today because it has an Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 under the hood. It takes a little bit of doing to get one of these to up and running. If you think you're just gonna bolt it on and you're gonna take an engine that's got 565 cubic inches and it's a big block and it's just gonna run and it's gonna self-learn, you're probably off in dreamland. You're going to need to take time to get the fueling correct, get the cam specs correct, and you're gonna to have to walk through each one of the menus inside the ProFlow system. Fairly straightforward, but Wally's gonna have his work cut out for him to get this one to run correctly today. We fired up this 565 cubic inch, big block Chevrolet. There were a lot of things that were just completely set up wrong. So while he's gone through all the basic settings within the Edelbrock Pro Flow software and just redone the setting, you need to let the intake air control work. So you have to turn the idle down so that it, it can actually compensate. So in a system like this that has that, you can't just leave the idle with the flap open trying to let the flap do everything because you're going to end up with a runaway idle. So we did that first. Then we made a couple of small passes and he looked at where are we lean, where are we rich. We had a big dip from 2,700 to 3,500 and the car obviously was making no power the way it was. So within 20 minutes, he's made a big improvement on the fuel and he's made a big improvement on the power. So we'll show you where it started out. We'll show you the couple of steps and what he fixed first. So first he was making 287 foot-pounds, 218 horsepower, and obviously that's just base, base settings. We went through together as a team and we set the timing. So what that means is that he's inside, he gives the timing a, um, a base to start at, and then I have to verify it with the gun to make sure that it is the same. If he's telling the computer that it's 12, and I come out and it's actually at 20, we have a problem here. So we call Houston and we get an answer. However, this time we were able to set it at 12. It reached 12, it's good. Which means that we can move on to the next step. We have the idle, we have the timing. Let's do some fueling. So this was interesting. He stepped on the gas a few times. You could literally hear it lean burn. Uh -huh. So it was running out of not air, but it was running out of fuel to mix with the air. And I'm gonna show you that. So when I look at this graph, I see something very, very seriously wrong, and Wally can see it in a different way. But in order to enhance that, I have to show you. So I bring the graph up here, and now we can see this big dip here. So if we bring this across, and we look at this, there's a huge dip in here. So when Wally sees that, either he sees that there's way too much fuel, or there's way not enough fuel, or the timing curve is wrong. But in this case, there was not enough fuel, so it would lean burping. The very next pass, he's gone through and he's made a whole bunch of changes and he's added fuel where it needs to be added. We get rid of this. I'm gonna show you that. Now we have a standard transmission that comes on, pulls, and goes. It's nice and flat. No dips, no swirls, no valleys. So the next thing to do, now that you have some of the drivability stuff worked on, now what you want to do is start to work on making power, just refining the fuel curve. So we'll go from where we are to refining the fuel curve and go from there. So in the end with this, the car is pretty well set up. 
What it needed was Wally to go through all of the setup files inside the computer, refine them, get the fueling correct, get the timing correct. And the hardest thing we had here was to, I think he was working on the IAC, which is your, um, basically it's an idle bypass. He wants to make sure it has enough range it can work correctly. So the idle was set uh, like quite a ways off. It was really, really, really high. And the hardest thing we had to do was get the throttle to kind of return. Because what was happening is the throttle would return one time a little bit higher and the next time a little bit lower. So it lubed it and put an extra throttle return spring. Seems to come back to zero now. As far as the tune goes, came right to life. 560 foot pounds and it'll make that every time. I think we made six or eight passes where it just made 560 foot pounds over and over and over. It's smooth, it's steady. And if you give it a cool enough air coming through, it'll make 520 horse. So it made uh, 516, 518, 519. Really, really happy with the way this came out. It's nice and smooth, the car is beautiful and there's really not a whole lot more that we can do with it. They're probably gonna go for a test drive now just make sure it's got good street manners.